Hey, this is the Nature Boy Rick Flip. And believe it or not, whether you like it or don't like it, learn to love it. Because you have to listen to Wrestling Is Real. It is the best thing going today. Woo! The worldwide leader of podcasting excellence. The king of podcasts radio network proudly presents The Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. Well, if you're waiting for yours truly to get into a really good rant on wrestling, tonight's the night. I've been holding my breath, been holding my tongue for a couple of weeks now. Yet, want to say what's been the inevitable since the bloodline has taken a break, which officially noted and started the off season, which I always talk about. There is, you know, we had SummerSlam, we got all the way through here. Roman Reigns taking a break, the bloodline taking a break. Even though, yeah, okay, Jimmy and Jay still involved in some way, shape, or form on separate brands. Doesn't matter. The bloodline storyline is essentially, it's right now mute. Because with Jimmy and Jay, they're not fighting each other. They're just on separate brands. And they're not going up against their their cousin, Roman. That's it. No solos of code, by the way, at all. Have we seen them? I don't know if we did. If we have, I'll, I'll admit, I have not paid much attention to programming. To the TV product, not much. There's not been much really for me to go and care about, to be honest. And thus, the weakness of this company is apparent. For those fans out there, those of you in that NXT Black and White 2019 bubble, Okay. Those who are the fans that are now cheering and championing what Triple H has been doing right now as of late. So you're happy about where everything's gone. And the, the bloodline storyline has been great. It has carried and, and anchored this entire TV product to some of its best numbers. Well, now we're into Monday Night Football season. So Monday Night Raw takes a tumble big time. Okay, 1.3 million viewers for Monday. Look, it's just going to be like that. Unless you have a couple of their stars that are significant enough to go ahead and get the numbers to go back up, you're not going to get it. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because no matter what you do, having Seth Rollins as World Heavyweight Champion and creating that belt, which was a mistake, and regardless of what and how well Seth Rollins is defending that belt and the best he's doing with what he has in terms of Finn Balor in a program and now Shinsuke Nakamura in a program, okay? It all comes down to the fact Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, The Usos, Judgment Day. We all know that what matters is that universal title. And the universal title and the WWE Championship, the Undisputed Universal Champion, is still the person that's up top, up top. And because of the fact that Roman Reigns is not to be beaten, he listen, you might have gotten some pins on him, Jimmy, or it's me, Jay Uso, right? But it doesn't matter. Obviously, the crowd isn't invested unless Roman is in the picture. And as long as he's not in the picture, and as long as people are not going on to go after him, see, other people holding the belt would actually be beneficial of the product, but they're not doing that because they don't want to. And now we're at the point where every one of these stars, no matter how good they are, they're considered inferior because none of them have been able to beat Roman Reigns, nor are they even contenders to the title because no one is a contender to that title at all. So what do you do now? Remember they went through several months of the bloodline with the civil war and all these other things that we're doing while Roman wasn't defending the belt at all. No Brock Lesnar to be seen of, you know, John Cena coming back. We're not going to put him up with to put the belt up. And when you bring back the rock, which you know, that's another story in its own talk about weakness. Let's just say this, the rock coming back this past week, the actors and writers are on strike. Okay. The, Screen Actors Guild, of which Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a member. Okay, it's been going on for, going on 70 days coming up this week. The writers have been going on for, what, 130 some odd days now? 
a very long strike. So Hollywood is shut down. For my wrestling fans out there that might not be familiar, I do the Broadcasters Podcast, and I talk about the actors of writer strike since May of this year. We've been going on it for now f- about five months. So when you realize, okay, there's all these shows that you would watch on streaming that would be coming up or movies that we're wondering, why are they being moved back? Why are, why is Dune and why are some other movies not going to be shown this year? And why are other projects being canceled and all of this? Well, that's going on because Hollywood is having a labor union problem. Okay. The actors, the writers, and besides what the rock is doing for his own career acting, He also produces for Seven Bucks Productions. But right now, he can't do anything with that because there was a story where major producers of TV and movie projects for the network, the Hollywood movie and TV studios, they are not taking work for him and they're also dumping projects. I haven't said that he's gotten it, but a lot of major producers of you know, the major directors, major production companies, they're not working right now. The rock has nothing to do in Hollywood. So after that number he did with Oprah out there, trying to go ahead and garner, you know, relief for the unspoken people of Maui and the fires that went on there, right? Which put a bad mark on him and his reputation took a hit. Like he's already getting a bad reputation anyway in Hollywood because the Black Adam movie, which was one of the big movies he was featured in, did not do well. And he was playing a DC character. It did not do well. It underperformed. That was a big mark for him. And right now we come up with this and it's like, and Jungle Queen didn't do really well a couple of years ago. Like he has not been doing well in the box office. He's not hitting any big numbers and he's not hitting a franchise where he's really standing out, you know, regardless of him being in the Fast and Furious series because that's just a big ensemble. So the rock has nothing to do and he needs to get some crisis manager. He needs to go ahead and be looked up as a hero. He needs to be with a fan base that supports him. So back to wrestling. He is He makes an appearance. Hey, people love the rock. Let him do his catchphrase. Go out there, do his thing. Yeah. Beat up on Austin theory. Fun. Okay. Rock bottom. Great. People's elbow. Yeah. See, the wrestling fans, you're just going to eat it up. You don't care. You're just going to eat it up because you're, sometimes it's just that simple for us to pop. I'm with that. I'm in the same boat with you. But let's just be honest with each other, okay? And it's also, why not, you know, WWE letting him go, like, having a chance to go and let him come back. I really believe that The Rock probably came back on his own. This is not one of those where, like, the Rock, you know, WWE needs The Rock. It's more like The Rock needs WWE right now. And that's, It's just exactly the way it is. You can say I'm wrong. I don't care. I know I'm right. But this also tells you, okay, Cena's back as the stopgap with no Roman Reigns. And The Rock comes back on SmackDown, of course, to help build ratings for that, to try to keep the numbers for Fox around 3 million viewers. Great. That's a smart thinking. If you can do it, why not? Just for an appearance. It's not a match, you know, and we all want to have that match eventually where Roman and the rock face each other. Like that's a WrestleMania match in the making. And maybe we can get that depending on what happens right now with a strike. We could be building up to a program with that, but that's as long as Roman Reigns finally comes back to be in storyline or unless he's hurt or whatever else. But at the moment, as long as Roman Reigns is still champion and he's basically dominant and smashed the competition, everyone else on that main roster has been deemed inferior. Now, the fans, okay, that watch every week, the dwindling amount of fans that will be willing enough to go ahead and sit three hours to watch Raw on Monday nights and not watch Monday Night Football or do something else, or watching Friday Night SmackDown, a little bit easier to go ahead and catch. The thing is, is that there's just other things going on. The audience is not willing to go ahead and put that time commitment in. They'll watch the clips. They'll watch on social media. They'll keep up. They'll watch the pay-per-views, but you know what? Five hours, seven hours of time now is getting harder and harder to come by. Like there's not enough that the company's doing to really build it up. And listen, maybe the booking has changed right now with triple H because his tournaments and his matches that he sets up and like booking for the week before and all of that. Yeah. Some of that was working, but it's also slowed down. 
but there's not much that's really exciting right now. Nothing that's really groundbreaking, very basic storytelling right now where they're just kind of just taking existing stars and just working with them. So the Heat, Shinsuke Nakamura back up as an opponent for Seth Rollins because they need somebody to go up against them. Okay. You set up now where the Judgment Day goes on with their deal holding a lot of belts and holding all the trinkets. But they're still like, okay, Rhea Ripley's the one that still has the most prominent belt. The tag titles, eh. You know, something happened where those tag belts meant something on the Usos, meant something on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Right now, it's like, okay, Judgment Day has all the belts. So what else is there for the the, the do, right? They're just kind of just there holding everything. They go on to NXT, and I'll tell you, going on NXT, seeing the Judgment Day go out there. Okay, if it was Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley going out there, I found one, one thing, but like it's the whole Judgment Day so overexposed right now, it's bad. Becky Lynch going to NXT and winning the belt. Uh, yeah, we get the story, but the talent's getting buried down there. And by the way, LA Knight also getting buried as well. And throwing in some bad storylines. Grayson Waller and Austin Three. Like, come on. There is nothing exciting right now. Oh, Drew McIntyre and Riddle, you know, teamed up together and that set up. Like, there's just some really watered down, weak storylines that are just stop gaps. Okay. Autopilot. The whole company's in autopilot right now because like there are no significant changes that are going to be made. There's nothing that's going to really happen in title changes or any major angles or turns. Nothing. Nothing's going to happen until probably Royal Rumble. Nothing in Survivor Series. Nothing in all these other pay-per-views leading up to it. I mean, they don't have any other major big stadium shows they got to worry about. Not right now. I don't think they're doing another show in Saudi Arabia as far as I know. Not this year, I don't think so. So what else have they got? They're just kind of moving along and just doing their thing. There's just not much else to do. It's weak. Very weak. You don't like to hear that, but it's true. There's no other way around it. And there's a lot of weakness behind the scenes with the company as well. There's a whole lot about Vince McMahon. More stuff that's going on that's going on about that. That's not good. Let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. So Vince McMahon was part of an employee meeting and Vince McMahon spoke after the merger of TKO Group Holdings where WWE and UFC merged to form, which we talked about last week. And like I said, last week I didn't have much else to talk about. And I wasn't going to go ahead and get to a rant on this because the story of the merger closing was good enough for me. Okay. But there's more to that. With any merger, especially one the size of this, over 100 layoffs in Stanford, Connecticut at Titan Tower. So that has happened. That's just part of, you know, with WWE now being given, you know, where they're part of a sale. Yes, things are going to change. And the way that things have been operating are not going to be exactly as such. But still some of the same people are still in their places of position and influence. That's where they are right now. So. This meeting that held was held. Let's put it like this. Numerous layouts on September 15th. Well, so that was last, what, Thursday? <clears throat> and then there was a meeting in Stanford, employee meeting. Mike Johnson, the PW Insider, reports that the meeting was opened by Nick Khan, Triple H, Kevin Dunn, Brad Bloom. Nick Khan spoke highly of Vince, noted it was unfortunate there were departures. Thank everyone for their work. And then Vince came out and highlighted the respect he had for Ari Emanuel, the guy that now runs TKO Group Holdings. He's the head of Endeavor, which caused the sale to create the merger of WWE and USC together. And then Vince says that the company has plateaued. Now, people are very confused as to what this being said. The company's plateaued. The Endeavor deal was what had to be done to take WWE to the next level. Okay, some people are really upset about that line. I'm not. He's absolutely right. Listen, there is not a higher level in the current state of WWE as it is that was going to get any bigger than a yarn right now. Okay. The bloodline story, that is their threshold. So now we add USC. We now add Endeavor. We now add the creation of the new TKO group. 
and Ari Emanuel and his team and whatever else that's going on within that company, they're going to put their input in to create the WWE into even a bigger entity. The stadium shows, the stadium shows are doing right now. The, no, the box office have been doing so far. Like that's a lot of good stuff right there. They've been able to do, but there's something to be said about a year round plan. Also, what are they going to do to continue to grow? Because the company and this big behemoth, they expect to grow it. Sean Ross, have a fightful tweeted about the meeting stated that Ari Emanuel introduced his daughter who now works for the company. WWE. McMahon referred to Emmanuel as his boss, and he said the company had stagnation. And the Endeavor deal was made to get WWE to the next level. So Vince explains, first of all, it can't just be Vince anymore as the only decision maker. We know that. But we also know that in terms of Triple H, Kevin Dunn, and the others you know, underneath the umbrella of what the company is right now, Okay, Nick Khan is all the day-to-day operations for as a CEO, which means, listen, when it comes to broadcast deals, when it comes to the major everyday things, the TV product, hey, there's not much more of a, of a peak it can make right now with the current staff. Stagnant. It's not wrong. He's absolutely right. You don't like to hear that, but it's totally true. Now, of course, wrestling fans are going to be able to say, well, look, you know, there have been public announcements through their second quarter meeting, right? Let's start with trade holders, stockholders. They announced record-breaking success, many premium live events in the months ahead of the Endeavor deal being a coming official. Correct. But to sustain that and to build upon that, this has to be understood. Yeah, it's not enough. To be able to sustain what they're doing right now, they need to do more. That's all there is to it. Now, one of the other things that has to be considered, too, is that with Vince, there's also the talk that the federal government investigations, the SEC, looking into Vince McMahon, that was actually put out in July, that's still not all gone away. So the hush money scandal from last summer and the money that was not re- recorded in WWE's annual accounts. So we know all about that. A search warrant was served, executed by the feds. Federal grand jury signed off on a subpoena to McMahon on July 17th. No charges have been filed of him as of yet. Jacob Frenkel, chair of Dixon Riot's government and investigations and securities enforcement practice group, former senior counsel of the SEC's division of enforcement, told the LA Times McMahon could face criminal or civil liabilities that could force him out of the role. So, yeah, he's not out of the clear of his legal troubles. That's still an issue right now, too. So we got still got that to worry about. And until then, Vince is not going to be the main part of the picture. But then who is? And what are they going to do as TKO Group Holdings, as a collective? What are they going to do right now to help boost the TV product? Because right now, there is no way to build and grow up, all right? Let's just put it like this. The NXT developmental system. I mean, listen, I try to watch Tiffany Stratton. She looks great. She wrestles pretty well. Promos are not great yet. And, you know, if you're going to put in there with Becky Lynch, she's not going to match up at all. Okay. Becky Lynch wins. She beats Tiffany Stratton after Tiffany Stratton ran through the rest of the roster. So they put a main roster star in there, let her roll through because they're trying to do something with Becky Lynch just to give her something to do after doing the long program with Trish Stratus because they don't want to put her up in any title pictures, right? As long as she's a face anyway. And that's it. Not much else they're going to do with her. They're just going to leave everything as it is. So while they'll still say the future and the outlook of the company is great, it still doesn't say that they it's not a good enough. So the new regime coming in saying it's not good enough. They need to do more. And as a result, the merger also creates morale going low because the headquarters have been decimated. So there was part of that going on. And now some of the divisions in, in WWE is going to be downsized and they're going to be short staffed. Who knows what they're going to be doing next. And this is what you got to understand. For those fans out there, okay, 
that want to think that whatever the Triple H is doing right now or whatever we have in the current setup of the main roster, when you don't have the bloodline and you're relying on Judgment Day to really roll things on Raw and putting G. Uso over there and Cody and Sammy and Kevin Owens, and that's your nucleus of what you're trying to work with over there on that brand. And then you're trying to build up some younger stars with Austin Theory and Grayson Waller over on SmackDown while including and incorporating John Cena, The Rock. Okay? So SmackDown has enough star power to help sustain that. And also there, is no, there are no major sporting events going on on Friday nights in the meantime until NBA that is going to hurt that brand. But for Monday Night Raw... Monday Night Football is just going to destroy them. They're going to continue to get 15 to 25 million viewers, period. Okay, and they're having two games they had this past week, which just destroyed what, any chance that Monday Night Raw had to even try to get, sustain the audience they have. Like, they're really hurting now to be able to go and keep who they have. There's just not more, much more to it. And that the way that... Triple H ran NXT and thinking that those stars that he brought in from NXT are going to be able to build up and live up to the luster of the main roster? No. Listen, if they're not John Cena, The Rock, Logan Paul, okay, if they're not the bloodline, I mean, Cody Rhodes also is in that mix, but as long as they keep him away from the title picture, he's also just down dwindling in the mix. Seth Rollins also in the same way. Seth Rollins is still holding a consolation prize. Cody Rhodes, the story about bringing Jey Uso in, I'm sorry, yeah, you try to make it logical, but it doesn't really, it's not much of a storyline. It's very thin at best. Everything else is well is thin. There's no real effort being put in, no real, you know, passion or emotion or any real intricacy to the storylines. There's nothing like that. No depth, nothing very basic it's vague it's shallow it's safe there's no risk and that's a big problem see the fans wanted to think oh well, well ricochet oh look at him going out there or shinsuke nakamura or la knight these stars on the level of what tko group holdings okay when they're looking at the stars they have for ufc remember outside of the wrestling bubble there are a lot of these stars you try to ask people about right now. They're not going to know who they are. They're not going to know who Judgment Day is. They're not going to know. They might know Cody Rhodes. They might know Seth Rollins. But they'll know John Cena. They'll know The Rock. And they'll know the bloodline. They'll know Roman Reigns. Other than that, nobody else. There is no one at that level. And that is the fault of the company, which they need to go and continue to do more. And by the way, if you know if the ratings are stagnant like now for Monday Night Raw with the star power that they have there, which, hey, it's one thing if AEW had that star power and, okay, over a million viewers. That's one thing. But right now, Monday Night Raw can't hold two million viewers. If they had the star power that was in play, like, listen, if they put John Cena and The Rock over there on the Monday Night Raw brand, they, they would have two million viewers probably. Maybe a little more than that. But that's it. That's their, that's their plateau. That's, their, that's again... That is the plateau that Vince McMahon is talking about. SmackDown, they can't get more than 3 million viewers, can't get more than 2 million on the TV product. And there's not much that we're going to do real as well to really build up what they're doing. Listen, it's the wrestling fans alone that are going to do this, but they need more casual fans coming in. And this product right now, without Cena, without The Rock, without Logan Paul, without Bad Bunny, without The Bloodline, you're not getting a casual fan base. You're not. Because the casual fans you thought that used to watch, you know, like WCW and watch WWE before back in the day, yeah, they're not there. They've completely left. Okay, they're off the reservation. They're not even tuning into wrestling. They're not probably even watching AEW pretty much because you can see the ratings for them. They're only where they're at as well, and that's it. But that's a company that's four-plus years in existence. This company's had a lot of time. And they got more than enough resources and more than enough roster to go and build up. But they just don't do a good job of developing new stars. And they don't do a good job of taking stars with some extra capital and making them even bigger than, than, than ever before. Like, who have they brought on from any other company that was built even more? 
Do you really think LA Knight has become a bigger star, more important because of what WWE's done? Do you think he's any bigger than he was as Eli Drake? No. Just because the crowd cheers for him. But that's just because it's like a novelty. Okay, here's somebody to cheer for. Like, okay, that's fun. So the live events, you got some stuff to cheer. Okay, you can sing and chant to Seth Rollins' theme and you could do, you know, whatever. But no. You need to build for a world, uh, for an audience that you get the worldwide audience of wrestling fans out there, but for American fans, you got to give them something more. TKO Group Holdings is not going to play the de- lowest common denominator anymore. That's over. It's over. Now, Variety.com actually talked about all this story and the merger to TKO's media rights. Because here's the thing. They're going to have certain stars they can use to go ahead and promote for the next media broadcasting rights deal for themselves. That's what they're working on right now. So here's a story from Cynthia Littleton. So every way, every way now that TV makes money from sports has begun to change as the industry transition to streaming up ends the marketplace. So now Endeavor's drop kicked the newly created sports entity. We talked about that TKO. Now they go through the story of how this came about. The formation of TK Group Holdings as a separate stock that is designed to attract investors. I only want to put money into a sports-focused venture rather than bet on the fortunes of the entire entity of Endeavor. Because look, they're making more money as one complete company because it's a it's WWE is now is just part of the portfolio of this. That's part of UFC, the Professional Bull Riders League, WME, the agency, New York Fashion Week, and other fashion, art, and lifestyle event franchises. So there's a lot of things under the portfolio. WWE is not the end-all, be-all of this major group. They're part of a big portfolio, but they're an important part. So now the brawlers and maulers are under the same corporate roof. They'll continue to operate separately. No blending of cage fights and WWE's highly scripted bouts, but there's the idea that there's supposed to be growth opportunities for both brands. And they're going to figure out those that are going to be outside of the normal scope that Vince McMahon had ever done but they'll still need Vince McMahon to take some of that big view, big top concept. So in the current state right now, WWE and UFC are going to be having their TV rights deals expire. UFC's contract with ESPN is up in 2025. As we know, NBC Universal and Fox and the deals with WWE are up in October 2024 and the Peacock streaming rights expire in 2026. So the pair have sold TKO to Wall Street on the promise of realizing significant gains, particularly the USC, on the financial terms of each organization's previous TV contracts. Yeah, they're not just going for just like a double or they're going to go after a large contract because they're now of who they're associated with. So with WWE, if they're going to be able to go ahead and pull even more than a quarter million dollars, it's going to be a quarter billion dollars per year for both shows individually, they have to bring up something more. The value of the company has peaked at a quarter billion dollars a year on both shows, getting $500 billion a year. That's pretty good. But for Endeavor, for the amount of money they've spent, $9 billion valuation. They need to make that money back. So they need to make more than that. Not just on premium live events, not just on the merchandise, the product, the TV product has to make more money. That's what they care about. But with what they're doing right now, collecting all these different properties to get themselves a deal as a sports entity for USC and for WWE, they're going to be able to do something pretty big. That's the plan. Morgan Stanley's top media analyst, Benjamin Swinburne, wrote in a research note last month that they are bullish or really positive on the unique value of sports because both UFC and and WWE will expect to translate into strong earnings for Endeavor. They're supposed to make a lot of money. The timings in terms of the WWE deal are sweet for Endeavor, which is now the part of the new TKO Group Holdings. So the big TV rights deal renewal coming up next year is reminiscent of when in 2016 Endeavor picked up the UFC and then struck a five-year deal for live events, cable, and pay-per-view with ESPN. 
And so Ari Emanuel told investors about this when the seal was being when the sale was being finalized back in April. Quote, this is once in a lifetime opportunity to bring together two leading pure play sports and entertainment companies operating in the most attractive parts of the media ecosystem. And they're also trying to do this during a really rough time for companies that are dealing with a strike and also, you know, companies that are not making a lot of money right now. They're actually losing some more than they are making. But the value of what they're bringing is very important. So the biggest challenge for sports on TV, okay, like for instance, MV NFL getting their billion dollar deals to have their show, their games on TV, new broadcasting rights for college football, the NBA coming up soon as well. Well, you're looking at number one, where things are going to be right now with the current cable TV business, cord cutting, right? I mean, besides watching Raw on USA, how many more times are you watching cable for anything? Like if you're watching, you know, wrestling, sure. You're watching TNBS and TNT for AW, and you're watching Impact for Access, and, you know, you're probably doing some of that. Now, sports has been long shittled from the pressures of economic downturns and network cost cutting because it's been so profitable. Yeah, they can sell a lot of advertising with it. But the same factors that are right now putting the Hollywood labor strikes together are in play when it comes to sports. So cable's not making as much money as it once was. You know, you're having a thing now where every streaming service wants to charge more money and it's not enough for them to go ahead and cover the cost of taking up other things. Like if it's the NFL or major league baseball or USC or WWE in general. And they talk about all the different things with sports when it comes to cable and all the things about what's been where, even though they've had certain companies and networks that have kind of gone by the wayside or have, be gone bankrupt. There's a lot of things where there's a lot of fluctuation in the networks that carry sports on cable. But that doesn't mean that the value of watching all the sports on cable doesn't have value. It does. It's just who has the money to go and pay for it. Now think about the fact of where things are with both companies, USC and WWE. Variety put out some information, some numbers on what they're doing right now. At the last check, WWE has over 800 employees. I don't know if that includes the layoffs they've already made. 300 plus events per year. Their global reach is 1.2 billion fans in 180 countries. Backed by all the legacy of what they've done with all the stars they've had. How much is that really contributing to who they have right now? Okay. Like, yeah, they're going to have that big event that's going on in India, but that's not going to be a pay-per-view. It's just going to be another big house show for them, but in front of a big crowd. Now, meanwhile, the global reach for WWE is bigger in more countries. The value of the company is less than UFC. UFC is worth $12.1 billion in valuation. And UFC earns twice as much as WWE, almost two to one. So the part of the thing is, okay, yeah, WWE can go and sell out arenas, and they're still doing that right now. Like, remember... It's like with WCW when they were having their bad times. Like, you know, they're going to 98 and the storylines were not that good, but the crowds kept coming. They're not slowing down on the crowds. They're not slowing down on any of that. But the product isn't as good as it was. Once Roman Reigns and the bloodline took a break, now the exposure, the weakness of the, of the brand is really coming across pretty strong. So the last time the broadcast rights for UFC and WWE were being set up, what about 2017, 2018, right? Or 2016 to 2018. Both were getting lucky breaks and hitting just as studios and streamers were in a mad scramble to acquire content for new programming. USC fights and pay-per-views became a pillar of ESPN and ESPN Plus under a rich contract. And with WWE, it was up for grabs as NBC Universal winning the stock of Peacock and the Fox Broadcast Network began a new chapter after the Murdoch sold most of 21st Century Fox, Fox to Disney in 2019. Yeah, this, this situation is really good. Where is it at right now, four or five years later? Because one of the things we know is that wrestling and MMA fans are different. But there was a time where the people thought that, you know, with some stars you see coming over, whether it's CM Punk or Brock Lesnar or Bobby Lashley or Jake Hager, you know, going into the octagon, 
or going into a cage to fight or Matt Riddle or whoever else. You're saying Ronda Rousey. Like you're thinking about, okay, there's a chance for some crossover of audience. And that's what they're talking about right here. So they talked to, Variety talked to Patrick Reich, director of the sports business program at Washington University's Olin Business School, that USC has a chance to reach a different audience. The same thing for USC fans to become WWE fans. Both companies are doing good in terms of cash flow and making money coming in the door. So that's one of the things they have. But both companies make more than two-thirds of their annual revenue through TV rights deals, contractually guaranteed, making it easy to project earnings. 10% of revenue at each shop comes from an extensive live event touring schedule. These sources combine ensure that TK will have enough steady cash flow coming on the door and never get tap to pay now more debt or bag back his own shares or buoy the price. So they have money that's being toured, put towards the live events to keep the shows on the road, on tour, and they need to be able to use those properties to get more money on the TV rights to make more money. That's what they're caring about right now. Now, the other thing they're working on right now when it comes to WWE is they need to boost their advertising sales, social media monetization. USC has been adapting young stars, bankable fighters, Sean O'Malley, Sean Strickland, Zhang Weili, catering to fan interest through social media and personal appearances. WWE has weathered ups and downs, growing kicks and nose tweaks of the grappling biz since the company was founded by Vince's father, grandfather, Jess McMahon, in 1953. So if UFC has been building some, a crop of new young stars, WWE doesn't have that. I mean, they have some younger stars they could work off of. Look, listen, I mean, we got Bianca Belair that's out there promoting products, and you can see you know, Rhea Ripley out there. You can see, you know, whoever else, Cody Rhodes out there. But it's like the real money out there, not the, not these companies like, you know, like if it's a pizza sponsor or a wireless sponsor, like they want these stars to be on to even bigger deals and give them mainstream appeal. And not just do this thing where, because, oh, because, you know, it's NBC Universal that has a deal. And so let's go and give somebody a shot to be on the Today Show or on the Tonight Show or whatever. Like as a gimme. Like they don't get it because they're getting a promo. They're getting the appearances and the promo time because they're noticed and wide noticed all around. They need that too. That's a lot they're worrying about. And as long as they don't have that set up, they're set up to where everything's going so good on the business end, but the product needs to continue to thrive. And at the moment, they're not doing it yet. Now, at the moment, the SmackDown TV rights are still going up, and Wrestling Observer Radio actually talked about it. Disney and Amazon are two companies most in contention for SmackDown's TV rights, which would change the dynamic of what they do. Because, I mean, if it's Amazon or Disney, they might not even put the programming on cable. Like if Disney does, maybe ESPN's the room for them, if that's the case. If it's Amazon, it's streaming. I don't actually mind if Amazon takes streaming, but it would change the dynamic of the whole product as well. I don't know what they're going to do, but it's a lot. It's a lot. But let's get back to the real matter at hand. They're struggling right now. The programming that they have right now is not holding up. Look, and it's funny where we're hearing people like, okay, I talked about last week where, or even what was it? I was actually playing a TikTok video and I actually, I created a TikTok video based on some clip that I played a while back, right? About what was going on with the company and what they're doing. And I want to play something I actually put out there that was pretty important that, you know, the company is struggling because of the fact that they're relying on the older stars that they have and there's not much else going on with it. And like the thought process that Triple H had that maybe some of his content that he has is going to hold up and they're going to do really good. Well, it's not. They're struggling badly. I want to play a clip that I put out there on TikTok and on through all the social media, by the way. If you haven't followed me, at King of Podcast, TikTok, Instagram, Trends, X. I'm pushing content now on a regular basis. You'll see me putting out content of all my programming on there. So if you want to check it out for yourself, you're going to do that. 
but I took an episode from, I think it was April of last year, why Triple H cannot succeed with Vince's recycle bin of rejects. Remember, all those stars that were let go, and then, and then Triple H bringing them back, thinking he could do something with them, well, not much has happened with them. So let's go ahead and play a clip, going back to what happened then. And I think I made, at that time a year ago, I think what I said about what was going on still holds up today. All these stars that this fan base, this WWE NXT full sale black and gold 2019 bubble crowd, they all wanted these stars here. And some of them they also wanted to keep because they moved along to other organizations where Adam Cole went away. The thing is, is that you have stars that might have gotten picked up in other places. But then, you know, there's one thing where those stars I make mention of, Triple H didn't get them where they were in another organization and pulled them back in. The OC is one example, yeah. But really, think about it like this. The reason we used to get so excited in the Attitude Era and the Nitro, uh, Monday Night Wars era, was when we saw certain stars that would move over. These were, these were stars that were already in demand somewhere else. So where are we at right now? I mean, you see things that are new, that are noteworthy, and I see the development and the push of stars over in AEW, of stars that finally are getting their their due, okay? When it comes to the way they're trying to build up Andrade, Miro, they're trying to build up Soraya once again, or Tony Storm, or Ruby Soho, Or the House of Black. Like, there's a lot of stars that I feel like that AW is trying to do something more with, and they are trying to, as much as they can, for the company that has the limitations of not having any kind of writers, any kind of booking committee like that, to really build storylines that are going to be so over the top. Like, they're basically a real conventional wrestling company. And they're putting out pretty decent TV content and a lot of good matches. Like the Dynamite Grand Slam tonight was really good. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But much more after that, you know, there's a threshold for them too. And they're going to keep building on the fact that hopefully that, you know, MJF is going to be even a bigger star than ever before. And they can make something out of him where he can just be that top star that's going to really build up. And to keep him as they are right now as a face as they have, I guess it's been working out fine. People are really into it. And they have other stars who are trying to also build up. And they, I feel like AEW is making a real concerted effort to develop and build stars. Like the younger stars they have was Sammy Guevara, now turning him heel to go join the Don Cowles family, right? And Chris Jericho working in that whole respect for years on this concept. What they've done with Adam Page, what they've done with Eddie Kingston. Now he's the you know, Ring of Honor world champion. Or what they've done with Orange Cassidy. Or what they done with, you know, Pickett. I mean, the way they let John Moxley become his own, the way that Brian Danielson now gets to be more of the uh, more of his former self and not the Daniel Bryan character, he gets to be who he was before the American Dragon and a, and a much bigger light. Claudio Castanelli also becoming back to his normal thing because, like, all these stars are going to be like the Ring of Honor personas continued, as if Cesaro and Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose are just. You know, they're figments of the past. <laughs> but you can tell that WWE is really just playing autopilot. And when they do this, it's not good. They're not really good at it. And so, like, okay, what about stars that are going to make their way over to, you know, they're going to cross ship? Okay, we're getting one right now that looks like it's going to happen. Jade Cargill is expected to go from AEW into WWE, but the talk is right now, they don't even know if Jade Cargill is going to go into the NXT brand or go to the main roster. But the contract she's probably getting will probably think she's going to go ahead and get on the main roster. She's slated to go to the Performance Center for training next week, or this week, actually. And there's been reports that Jade Cargill, they're already getting creative on her right now. Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez talked about Cargill's status within the company. And
Meltzer says that they're already working on creative for her. <clears throat> it makes a point that, you know, she'll get a vocal push because the money to get her, you have to give her a chance to get over because they're not paying what they would pay a normal person to start there. It's not like Charlotte Flair money or anything like that, or Becky Lynch money for a newcomer to the company, but it's higher than they usually go. And I don't know if you're going to go ahead and like think that the NXT idea to go ahead and bring her into NXT first is going to work. I don't know about that. Listen, NXT is only being propped up by the Spain event stars they keep bringing over. If it's up in appearance by Seth or, you know, Judgment Day or Baron Corbin or Becky Lynch. That's what's been built. That's what's been propping up the numbers on that show. Meanwhile, you got a bunch of stagnant stars over there. Braun Breaker and Wes Lee and... You know, like if I were in NXT, I want one to make it to the main roster because I'm not going to get any bigger being over here anyway. Like some of the stars, you would start off with the rainbow brand in the first place when it comes to the, the Diane and Joe Gacy or Andre Chase or, you know, Von Wagner. Like it's all these stars that are just stagnant. They're really not gone anywhere. They're just there but not really building up more from it there's just not much to it and so i look at what they're doing on the programming now i can look across the board and i can just see constantly across the board nothing but autopilot and raw's the biggest culprit remember to get three million years on smackdown yeah you put you you sandwich john cena and the rock in there yeah you're going to get some numbers but is that going to really suffice for the rest of the show? No, not really. Now, there were changes that were made to Raw. So, like, the normal thing of, like, changes being done is also being concerned. Nia Jax coming back. People are really upset about that. I haven't really talked about much of that either, you know, but it's been going on as well. There was talk that Tegan Knox was going to be built back up to go and go up against Becky Lynch for the NXT women's title, but no, they're going to just go for another rematch with Tiffany Stratton. Viking Raiders. They've been building up to go against the new day in a two out of three falls match, but now Ivar and Kofi Kingston are going to be set up. It looks like for the fast lane premium live event next month. Then you have Natalia coming out now to deal with things, and I'm like, ugh. And then there was a talk about where Ricochet was going to take on Shinsuke Nakamura following Cody Rhodes against Dominic Mysterio, but now there's been a call to push back because they need more star power to later segments, and Seth Rollins will be involved. And some of the storylines in the, in the programs they're working on right now, currently on Raw, Cody versus Dominic, Piper and Chelsea versus Zoe and Shayna, Ugh. Ricochet and Nakamura, Chad Gable and Bronson Reed, Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso, and Tommaso Ciampa and Giovanni Vinci. Kofi versus Ivar, Natalia versus Becky Lynch. This is what we're getting right now on Raw on a regular basis. That's it. There's not a lot there. And remember, these are a bunch of stars that were built up and they were given a chance to be pushed a couple different times and it didn't work. All right. Natalia's been put into the picture back and forth and she's been hot and cold so long for so long. The New Day, the same thing. Tommaso Ciampa coming back in now and it's like, you know, that guy's never going to get to the level of where he was with Goldie in NXT or what he was in Ring of Honor for that matter. Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, yeah, they can do something with that. Bronson Reed, I don't see the what he's been made any better either. Like, I really did enjoy him as Jonah in Impact and, you know, working in other co organizations, but nothing right now, nothing. No momentum on this. But Chad Gable, Jesus. And Ricochet Nakamura, like, remember, these are two guys that have been kind of buried for a long time and they are putting this in there. And then you got all this going on here with Chelsea and Shayna. 
you know, at odds and Piper and Zoe be brought into the mix because they just need to be brought into the mix. It's all weak. Like how many of these, how many of these programs do you feel like are going to be really good pay-per-view programs? They're not. Of that group, you're talking about Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, and Cody and Dominic. That's it. That is it. Not much more after that. That's the 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 segment where you got with Raw. And then if you're going to have Cody and Sammy and Kevin and G. Uso and the whole thing set up there, that's their way to kind of like, you know, putting in a little bit of the bloodline storyline because of Sammy and Jay's experience plus Cody and all that. Like this, you're trying to go ahead and put Jay Uso in here and, oh, we don't trust in this and that or whatever. And then G. Uso now being attacked by Judgment Day all of a sudden. Okay, You know, it's that's what they decided to go with. And Tommaso Ciampa now is the guy that wants to go after Gunther. This is weak all across the board. What they're planning right now is not interesting whatsoever. It's just not. And of course, the whole night when you're talking about with Raw, you start off with Cody, Sammy, Jey Uso, and all that. And then you finish with Judgment Day at the end. And that's it. It's not enough, obviously. See, we just know those two main storylines with, you know, all those remnants of the bloodline and the judgment day thinking that's going to be enough. No, obviously it's not because the numbers really res- res- reflected that. And that's not just a fluke. That's just the way it's going to be. At this point, this point, when Internet raw needs to be worried about going to the near the sub 1 million mark or getting, you know, into the 1.1 to 1.3 million viewers on a regular basis or losing more than that. Because Monday Night Football right now is on a tear. There's not much else that's going to hold back on that. Meanwhile, hey, Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, they're trying to work on things now. Like Their numbers are not great either. And they're also hurting because of the fact that you're trying to do something now with wrestling. And it's like, well, you're not going to do much more when it comes to Saturday nights with collision because college football is going to get destroyed by all the what's going on right now. Anyway, not much else they can do either because everything's getting hurt by football, right? You're looking across the board at the moment when it comes to collision and raw, those two shows are getting decimated right now. So at the moment, if you look at just in October and in, in, into the start of football season, okay, Labor Day weekend, 345,000 viewers for collision, 476,000 for, you know, after Liberty weekend, it's struggling. The dynamite's been struggling right now, but it's still around the 800,000 into the 900,000 mark occasional. And that's it. With raw without football to worry about, they were staying around 1.6 to 1.8, but you know what? Now, you know, the star power that you really have. Because if you were going to have any of those stars stick around, then it was going to hold up against Monday Night Football. Well, it's not. And I feel like WWE right now is just conceding to the fact they're not going to be able to do anything more against Monday Night Football anyway. Like They're not going to win. They're not going to hold on to much. And I think they just are living with that. And so they try to say, well, let's try to build the audience over on NXT. And what they've done, eh, they've gotten some 700,000 viewers. they got 850,000 now with the whole deal with Becky Lynch last week. So you could do that. What else do you do after that? Struggling. As I said, there's a lot of weakness right now across the board. It's not good. So there was so much that happened on dynamite that really did stand out. It was really good. MJF, you know, being the strong baby face here with Adam Cole and the whole storyline with that. MGF retains over Samoa Joe. So Samoa Joe takes another big loss, but still Ring of Honor TV, TV champions. That's okay. We have a new international champion. Apparently, John Moxley got hurt. So it looks like the change of the match where Ray Phoenix got to win the belt, how that worked out. And then with Simi Guevara and Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho beats Simi Guevara. 
and then Jericho was hit with a low blow by Guevara, and then Don Callis comes out, and Guevara joins the Don Callis family. Great. Eddie Kingston, Claudio Castagnoli. Eddie Kingston wins. Now he has both the IWGP Strong Openweight Championship, I think it is, and he has the Ring of Honor World title. Wonderful. Love it. And it looked pretty good what they were doing out at Grand Slam. Like, it looked like a pay-per-view tonight. They were just going nonstop, match, 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 match. Good stuff all together. And while I'm looking at that, let me go ahead and just play the part where Chris Jericho gets screwed because, like, the crowd, the response was pretty good to it. And Sammy, he said he needs this match. He needs this win. And Chris Jericho needing it as well. And Jericho coming away with the victory. The hand of friendship, the hand go. of brotherhood extended. Love to see it. And Jericho whispering in Sammy's ear. Only imagine what words of encouragement the Ocho has for his young protege, Sammy Guevara. Sammy's a competitive guy, I'm sure. Oh! Ah, there you go. What did I just see? The low blow. Sammy Guevara, what have you done, Sammy? Wait a freaking minute. Oh, boy. Don Callis. What is this low life doing out here? The biggest rat in New York City has just walked into the ring. Let me tell you something. I really am invested in the fact of the Don Callis family slowly working its way to build up, and now you got Konoski Takeshita, now you got Sammy Guevara under the banner of the Don Callis family. Don Callis is so polarizing right now because listen to what happened. All he had to do was just go walk out there after Sammy hit the low blow, and all of a sudden, this is why M. Jeff doesn't need to be healed right now. Don Callis and whoever is underneath his faction. His stable is going to be overly hot and overly heel. That's your heels right now. Anybody underneath the Don Callis family, that those are your heels. That's the top heels right now coming up. So MJF can go ahead and stay around and be continuing going on into this storyline with Adam Cole and the kingdom and Roderick Strong and everyone else they want to bring into the mix and seeing if MJF can continue to go ahead and keep defending the belt while he continues to have his hurt neck which they need to continue to go ahead and work on on a regular basis to keep talking about. Eventful Grand Slam, there's not much else to say about that. But at least AEW is consistent. Okay, they were able to put out several good pay-per-views in August with All In, All Out. We're going to get the Wrestle Dream coming up in August 1st, or October 1st, excuse me. They're already building up the card for that as well, and it looks like they're going to build it pretty good. So off the bat, Wrestle Dream will feature so far Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr., Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page. And they've been building up all that for it, which is great. And then AW World Title, FTR versus Aussie Open. And Katsuya Shibata will be wrestling at the show as well. So they're already building up matches. Climate Pledge Arena, Seattle, Washington, October 1st. And there's also a lot of things going on when it comes to October. Next month, we'll be pretty busy with wrestling. AW Wrestle Dream. Fast Lane, Impact Wrestling's Bound for Glory, and NWA's Sowin coming up in Cleveland, Ohio. All that coming up for wrestling right now. There you go. That's an hour in the books. And we'll stay on top of what's going on here. There are not a lot of good being considered when it comes to where the company is right now. With WWE, where the, WWE right now is dealing with some real weakness issues. They do not have the roster right now to really sustain and, you know, please the new suitors of TKO Group Holdings. Woo! You know, after it's all said and done, you're going to wish, honestly, that Triple or me, that Vince was still in charge, okay? Because right now, the new people in charge, the new people that are looking to go and build and grow the company, they're not going to be satisfied with what we're going to see right now. We'll keep an eye on it. So... Find all the programming at sportsingofpodcasts.com. Follow me on social media. 
I'm always putting clips up there and other commentary. Of course, please subscribe to the show, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and all of the major podcast platforms. Subscribe, like, and share to my YouTube channel at the podcast. Come back for another Wrestling Girls Podcast because wrestling needs us. Ready?